In this video, we're going to be going over a general overview and structure of the sarcomere. And what a sarcomere is, is the basic contractile unit of skeletal muscle found in one single muscle cell. So what we're looking at here is from this red portion to this red portion, those are called Z-lines. And the Z-line to Z-line represents one full sarcomere. And as we go inside, these thin red bands or thin filaments are called actin filaments and these thicker blue filaments are called myosin filaments. And so those are going to be our two most important structures of a sarcomere. Now, if we look at the actin filament, there's a few more important areas to examine. These little black areas all over the actin filament are known as troponin complexes and the yellow band that wraps its way around is the tropomyosin. Now, when a sarcomere is at rest under a microscope, there's a few distinct bands that appear. As we move in from the Z-line, this region that encompasses just actin filaments is the I-band. As we move further in, there's a region known as the A-band, which goes from the end of the thick filament to the other end of the thick filament. And then in the middle region, there's an area known as the H zone, which encompasses just these thick filaments. And then this portion in the middle is known as the M line, which divides the sarcomere into equal halves. Now we're gonna be taking a look at some of the basic steps involved in a skeletal muscle contraction. So again, as you see here on the actin filament, you have these troponin complexes and tropomyosin wrapping inside and these myosin filaments here as well. Now, during the steps of a muscle contraction, calcium will be released into this muscle cell. And as calcium levels within the muscle cell rise, they will bind to these troponin complexes. As calcium binds to these troponin complexes, that causes this yellow tropomyosin band to actually change its shape and move out of the way for a binding site for these myosin filaments to attach to the actin filaments. Once attached, these myosin filaments are actually going to pull on the actin filaments and they'll slide past each other. And in this example, you'll see that as they pull, this filament is getting shorter as we produce force. And that concept of the muscle shortening during an active contraction and force production is known as a concentric muscle action. So here we'll examine the eccentric muscular action. Now we have to remind ourselves that the role of skeletal muscle is to create mechanical tension and that signaling comes from the central nervous system. When we have the interaction between the myosin head located on the thick filament and then the actin located on the thin filament, we have to now consider the idea of length. So when myosin is connected to actin, while simultaneously the muscle is elongating, we will see that the role of muscular action during elongation is going to be the slowing of this expansion. The eccentric muscular action in many instances is meant to counteract concentric muscular action of the opposing muscle group. If you think force absorption or maybe landing of a jump, you can think of the eccentric muscular action. The role of skeletal muscle is to convert an electrical signal into mechanical tension. If we think about how mechanical tension is created, it's going to be from the interaction of the myosin head located on this thick filament with actin located within the thin filament. Now, we understand that during concentric muscular action, we will see a shortening and a sliding mechanism unfold. But when we consider the isometric muscular action, we have to realize that 
in the sarcomere, you will see the myosin head attached to the actin. That attachment is followed by the creation of tension. And then this length is then maintained. The distance between the Z line and the M line during isometric contraction is initially shortened, and then that shortened length is maintained over time.